Carabids are predatory beetles that can be found in crop areas eating major crop and livestock pests such as slugs, snails, aphids, pest bugs, grubs and flies. Some species even eat weed seeds, removing competition with the crop, so we definitely want them in our crops and pastures. Scientific studies have shown that measures such as putting in margins and beetle banks and taking field corners out of grazing in farm habitats will boost their numbers. But does this mean that they will move into productive areas when we need them to eat the pests? To answer this, first, we need to understand why and how carabids move in the landscape. As for the why, we can think about what carabids need. Areas to feed all year round, breeding areas with food and safety for eggs and larvae, and good shelter for hibernation and estivation, which is a summer hibernation. And then we can think about how. Carabids move around locally every day for foraging. They also make longer seasonal movements to and from hibernation and shelter areas, and to new resource areas. In farms, these movements coincide with the cycles of crops and pastures and associated pest occurrence. Machinery operations and pesticide applications can affect carabids in the field, from reducing their ability to feed and breed to direct mortality. But the availability of more permanent semi-natural areas means that the population overall can persist and move to recolonize field areas. On a landscape level, linked up semi-natural habitats means that carabids immigrate from surrounding areas to replenish populations. Also, new species can come into farm areas as resources and conditions change. Secondly, we need to understand how carabid species differ. There are around 30 species of carabid common to agricultural land. They range from around 2 mm to 3 cm in length, and they can move in different ways. Some disperse only by running, while some fly long distances in swarms. Each has their own habitat preferences. Some are better at eating particular crop pests, some are active at different times, and each has different tolerances to such things as weather extremes or management practices. Having lots of species will give the best chance of effective pest control, come what may, but we could even tailor our farm habitats to attract species that are particularly beneficial, such as this great black clock, if you, say, have a problem with slugs or this pin palp if your land is particularly prone to aphid outbreaks. A general rule of thumb is that diverse landscapes will support diverse species assemblages, but this doesn't help when starting from scratch or choosing what to put and where. So when we begin new management or install a feature, how do we know it's working to attract the species we want into the area we want? Monitoring with pitfall traps is a good way to see what species are in your farm habitats over time. Pitfall trapping is as simple as burying a pint-sized container in the ground with a killing fluid of water with a drop of unscented detergent, then putting a lid raised 2 to 3 centimetres above ground level to protect from the elements. You can leave it overnight or several days. You can then either just see how many beetles you catch in natural versus your productive areas, or identify the presence of key beneficial species. This way you can see if your management interventions are contributing to natural enemy pest control in the best way. Feeding back to scientists can then help us improve our understanding of what works, and we can continue to improve the productivity of farm habitats together.